Hello and welcome again. This is the second part of the series of videos about implementing the stream cipher in Java. In the previous video, what we did was uh, uh, this read the string of zeros and ones and put it into a list. This is a string of zeros and ones input by the user. And we saw how to put that in a, in a, a list array. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, because we want to implement the um, stream cipher and let me scroll all the way up where I have the picture here of the stream cipher so we actually did this part already so we took an input of zeros and ones put it into a string and what we need to do now is do this part the part where uh, the user is going to put a password in it is going to produce a sequence of zeros and ones and it's going to be a random sequence and this is really important the random sequence of zeros and ones in here the length of that sequence has to be exactly the same as the length of the sequence that the user input in here because we're going to do a bitwise sort bitwise sort so this random here number of zeros and ones that is coming from the password has to be the length of that string has to be exactly the same as the length of whatever the string of zeros and one is coming from here. Okay, we did already did this one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in at this one, how we're gonna do that. So let me scroll back down again and see how we're gonna do it in here. So we're gonna go to the second part, which is this one, read the password from the user and transform it as the important part into a random list of zeros and ones and remember that random list has to have a length equal to the length of zeros and ones that the user input from step one so that's very important so let's do that let's do the second part so so and then here of course uh, the same thing again it has to be the same length as the input from zeros and ones of the user the password here we're going to consider that as a string so password is going to be of type of string so password the password will be a string this password is a string it's a string of characters in java and what we're going to do is to produce uh, um, a sequence of a list of zeros and ones so how are we going to do that so a string is usually just uh, letters or characters there so that password could be uh, something like whatever password you use, for example, for your computer. So what, how are we going to do that? How are we going to uh, get the sequence of zeros and ones? So one way to do it is this one. Okay, you're going to start with your password. And let me call that P, password P. This is the password. The password. You're going to produce a number out of it. It's going to produce an integer. I'll go into the details in a second. So I'm going to produce an integer here. Okay, from that password. How are we going to do that? You have to wait a little bit. And then from that integer, what I want to do is I'm going to use this integer as a seed of a random number generator. Number, let me delete this this is a random number generated uh, and we actually did that already so we talked about seed random number generator we talk about seats when we generator when we talk about the class random now so once you have the integer uh, you set it as the seed for a random number generated and then here you're gonna produce a list of uh, zeros and ones so that's basically what we're going to do we're going to take again the same let me repeat that again i'm going to take a password which is a string of characters or a string i'm from there i'm going to produce an integer which i'll tell you how it how you do it Produce an integer from there from that that integer we're going to use it as the seed of some random generator which is in this case is going to be random for us and using that random and remember, we already saw how to do that. Once you have the uh, object random in a seed, you can produce a random sequence of integers. In this case, we want a random sequence of zeros and ones. And we can do that. All right, so let's talk about this part here, the part where you have a password and you want to uh, put it or transform it into an integer. 
Uh, there is a way to do that in, in Java. And when you have a, a string, in this case the password, what you have to do here is basically apply a function which is already implemented in Java that's going to give you an integer from that string of characters. And I think we talked about a little bit of this, is, is, is the hash code of that of that password. Now, this is not really a hash code that is a modern hash code. This is a low-level hash, hash code, but we're going to use it here because we don't need that much sophistication in this, in this kind of program. So, so let me talk about the Java here. So in Java, what we're going to do, uh, this is gonna, what's going to happen in Java. So in Java, so once you have a string, you can create a, a number or an integer out of it using the function called hash code. So let me, let me write down what that is. So for example, let's, let's suppose here that uh, I'm in, in Java and I'm going to define a string here. So string, variable string. And I'm going to call it um, my password, or let's call it pass w. And I'm going to assign that into a, a string. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying this is my variable. And again, you can call it whatever you want, pass w. And it's a variable of type string. And I'm going to say what it is. I'm going to say quotation here. And I'm going to say, for example, something like this. Let's say this is my password my password so once I put that in, in Java what it's gonna do is of course it's gonna create a variable of type string which is named pass w and that is a variable is gonna contain this string this is my password here you can put whatever password you want so for example the one that you use to log in in your computer now that is a string right now it's just a string now, how do we get a number out of it? Uh, we're going to get an integer number out of it in the following way. You, we, we can do it like this in code in Java. So, for example, we can say, I'm going to say, I'm going to get an integer out of it. So, it's going to be stored in a variable integer. And I'm going to call it, for example, let's say number. So, I'm looking at a variable called number, that called number here, which is of type integer. And that number is going to be the number that comes from this power, password. And the way it's going to be done in Java goes like this. It's actually very simple. You put the name of your string, whatever that string is. This is pass w, which is the name of my string. This is the name of my string. And I'm going to say dot. And then I say hash code. And that's capital, capital uh, C there. Uh, parenthesis and semicolon. I okay, didn't have a space there to write down the whole thing, but this is this is supposed to be just one line of code, right? So it's the name or the string of characters, whatever that variable you call it, dash, uh, this, sorry, dot, hash, and I, I'm forgetting an H there, so it's hash code. Let me just write down this in the proper way here. So that's going to be just hash code with an H also. So that hash, let me write that down, hash code parenthesis semicolon so that would produce an integer there an integer coming from 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 this uh, from this string of characters and that would produce an integer now uh, how is that in in Java what Java is is actually doing this is code hash code uh, what Java is actually doing is taking the this string of characters that you see there the password this one right here and it's converting that into a number the way it's converted is it takes the uh, ascii code of every character multiply by a power of two and add them all up that's basically what it's doing uh, for this particular hash code and of course there are a little bit better hash codes that we're going to use uh, later in the class but for now this is going to suffice for us because the only thing we want is from a string i want a integer from that string. So let's see how that works in, in Java. So I'll show you the code in the Eclipse application. So I'm here in the Eclipse application and as you can see there I had the same things I had in the when I was writing. So I have um, the first line of code that you see there is just the variable uh, pass w which is a type string and I define it as this is my password. 
and then right after that I'm gonna create a integer variable coming from that password so I'm gonna call that a number so it's the variable name here is number of type integer and it's gonna be password whatever the password is, whatever that that is string of character is and I say dash the dot hash code and that will give me the integer that corresponds to that path to that string of characters now remember what it does is it takes the ASCII representation of each character and multiplies it by a power of 2 and makes that addition you really um, don't need to know exactly what it does but it bas that's basically what it's doing so so once I run this code what's gonna happen there is it's gonna give me a number that is coming from from this uh, this string of characters that you see here and of course I'm gonna print it out and the third line of code there is just to print out that whatever that number is so let me save it and I'm gonna run that and so as you can see there I have an integer number that comes from that password now um, that's, that's it that's basically it now one thing that is important to mention here is if you change that password in only one letter then that that hash code is going to change completely so let me show you uh, how that works so let's say for example now in here I have my password that I call passw and I'm going to change just one letter there let's say for example I'm going to delete that y that you see there so I'm going to delete it so now my variable password of type of string is going to contain just that that is string of characters that you see there so I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it and as you can see that the number is completely different and that's the idea of the hash code the idea of the hash code is if you change only one thing then the whole result should be different and the idea of course here is because if, it, if a password is different you correspond to a completely different um, uh, integer that not, all, not always happens though sometimes there are some things that are called collisions but uh, this is the best we can do so far at this moment in the class so if let, let me go back here to the previous password so they put a Y there right? so and then you will go back to the previous number the number that we just saw earlier so that's the hash code of that password now if of course if I add something then of course this is gonna change again the number this is my password and I say for example one two three four terrible password and so if I run this again what's gonna happen is gonna give me another number so that's the number right now so every time you change something just a little bit of it then it's gonna change the integer and that's exactly what we want because what we want is for that password to have kind of a unique uh, integer that correspond to that to that password again that not all, always happens sometimes uh, you have uh, different passwords and you're gonna get uh, fortunately the same number but uh, in this case that's the best we can do so far at the class at the moment with the tools we have at the moment so that's basically what I have to say about converting a string of characters or the password in this case into a number and then we can fit that into into a random number generator so I'm gonna go back to writing in a little bit so we already transform a, any kind of a string into an integer so basically what I'm saying is uh, this is step that you see here password to an integer this is something that is already done now the next thing we have to do is look at what happens if I have an integer and I want to produce a list of zeros and one and remember what you do is you set a seed of a random number generator and to do that um, actually this is something that we already did in random number generators now remember what you do there is you take and I'm gonna be uh, very fast here because we went into the very very much detail of how you do that so if you have a random number what you do is you use the command set seat that whatever whatever the name of your of your random random object is and use a random object don't use a secure random because it's gonna change every time you put your password because it's gonna uh, collect entropy so use 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 the class random set seed and remember this was a long that you put in here a long integer so basically what I have to you have to do is 
take that integer that is here and put it in there. Okay. Now you might have to maybe cast that uh, integer into a long, and that's not difficult. Uh, you just have to do long and whatever the name of, of your integer is that comes from the password. So once you set the seed, then you can create a list. So you create, so you create the list of zeros and ones. Create the list of zeros and one. And of course, that's going to be a random list of zeros and ones. And I claim we did that already. We took a random object, we set the seed for it, and we had actually two ways to do that list. One of them was with a for loop, and the other one was with the stream. Now, if you don't remember how that is done, then you have to go back and watch those videos again on how to uh, set a seed for a random object and generate a list of numbers in that sequence. Now, remember, this list has to be between zero, and it has to be zeros and ones, zeros and ones, not a list of one, twos, and threes, and fours. It has to be a list of zeros and ones, and you can do that. Now, uh, you'll have to figure out what is the range that you need to be able to produce the list of zeros and ones. And so, if you're confused about that, again, go back to that video where we made a list of pseudo-random numbers using an object random, and you will see that how to make that list. Now, you have to create a list of zeros and ones, and it has to have, it has to have the same length, the same length, as this as the list the user entered okay and that's important remember uh, you have to decide what is the length of that list and remember the length of that list is has to, has to have the same length as the length of the list of the user that the user entered in the first place the x uh, zero the the, the list zeros and ones that the user entered the first time, not the password. So you'll have to figure out how to do that, how to get the length. I basically told you how to do it. You just have a string or a list and you just get the length of that using the command that length parenthesis semicolon. So basically what you have to do is, I actually told you exactly what you need to do here. So we did this already, got going from a password or from a, a string of characters into an integer. You're going to use that integer to put it as the seed of a random object. And the random object is going to produce a list of zeros and ones. It has to be a list of zeros and ones with a length which is equal to the length of the zeros and ones that the user entered in the first place. So you have to do a little bit of code there. Again, if you don't remember how to do that seed, with random number generators and a specific length, you have to go back and watch the video that we did on random number generators in Java, the specific video for that. So, so that's it, that's all you have to do to do a step number two. So let me go back here, what was the step number two? So let's go all the way back here. What was the step number two? Read a password, for, read a password, you read it using a scanner and transform it into an integer, we did that using the hash code and then to transform it into a list of zeros and ones, what you do is you call a random object generator. You uh, put a list there, so a list that has zeros and ones, and the length of that list has to be equal to the length of the zeros and ones that the user entered in the first place. So that's step number two. So that's it. The next thing is step number three, which is uh, basically I have a list a two list of zeros and ones, and I wanna sort that list bitwise. So that's the thing what we're gonna do in the next video. So I'll see you in a little bit.